Are you prepared to delve into an enthralling tale of legal maneuvering and suspense? Brace yourself, as I have some exhilarating updates to share. Envision a scenario where your online identity hangs in the balance, vulnerable to manipulation. Now, envision the arrival of a formidable legal expert, ready to assert authority over your digital duplicate. Indeed, we are on the verge of an adventure where the stakes are sky high and anticipation runs rampant. So, fasten your seatbelts and prepare to unravel the gripping plot twists in this unfolding narrative. Before proceeding, confirm your faith in God by responding with yes. Remember, our lives are shaped not only by what we receive, but also by what we give. A modest donation of $40 can provide sustenance for a child for several days. Are you prepared to move forward? Are you ready to leave behind everything? After viewing this video, you'll likely take a moment to express gratitude to God for guiding you to open your heart. God assures you that even amidst your busiest moments, taking a minute to read this message will bring brightness to your day. There's an urgent issue to address. Someone has engaged a formidable lawyer, aiming to decipher your duplicate countersign. It appears that your countersign may have been accessed without your consent, and there are intentions to utilize it in ways that may not align with your best interests. It's crucial to remain vigilant about what's happening behind the scenes, especially regarding matters concerning family and property. God is drawing your attention to this situation to safeguard you. His purpose is to ensure that you are informed and attentive, empowering you to take the necessary steps to protect yourself and your belongings. This message serves as a warning, urging you to stay alert and defend what rightfully belongs to you. In the days ahead, you will gain clarity and understanding about the specifics of the situation. God's guidance will light your path, uncovering any wrongdoing and equipping you with the wisdom to address it effectively. Trust in his divine guidance, as he comprehends the broader picture and discerns what is best for you. Throughout this process, remember that God's grace is ever-present. He is overseeing you and all that is yours, ensuring that you are upheld and safeguarded. Embrace his presence, allowing his wisdom to direct your decisions and actions. Stay receptive to his guidance, whether through prayer, meditation, or signs in your daily life. Maintain steadfast faith, knowing that God's plan for you is characterized by love, protection, and divine purpose. With his guidance, you can navigate any challenges that arise and emerge stronger than before. Place your trust in his wisdom and embrace his grace as you progress forward. With the divine's vigilant gaze upon you, your safety is assured and no harm can befall you without his awareness. It's crucial to exercise caution and stay alert to the people and circumstances surrounding you. Sometimes, subtle cues may hint at underlying issues not readily apparent, but your intuition and discernment can aid in uncovering the truth. Trust your instincts, and if something seems awry, take it seriously. While navigating this situation, Rely on your faith and seek divine guidance through prayer. Request his wisdom and insight to illuminate the correct path ahead. Remember that God's guidance is readily accessible to those who earnestly seek it. Maintain your connection to him through regular prayer and meditation, allowing his divine guidance to steer you through any obstacles you encounter. By remaining vigilant, trusting your intuition, and seeking God's direction, you can navigate through this circumstance with clarity and assurance. Hold firm to your faith, knowing you are under the protective embrace of the divine, and he will guide you securely through any challenges. Indeed, recognize that God's love knows no bounds and is unconditional, with his ultimate desire being your well-being. In due time, the individual who has wronged you may come to acknowledge their mistakes and seek forgiveness. Acknowledging wrongdoing requires bravery, and their act of repentance holds the potential to ignite healing and reconciliation within your family. Place your trust in God's boundless grace and love to facilitate a resolution that fosters peace and restores harmony to all parties involved. Ground yourself in your faith, 
recognizing that God is tirelessly laboring for your highest benefit, even amidst life's trials. Embrace the virtues of forgiveness and compassion, guided by the profound example of Christ's love, and allow God's transformative might to mend fractured relationships and usher in healing. At every juncture, God's vigilant gaze comprehends all, piercing through the veils that obscure our vision. His timing, faultless and exact, orchestrates events in accordance with His divine blueprint. Place your trust in His supremacy, for He steers every circumstance with unmatched wisdom and boundless affection. Although uncertainty may cast its shadow, be assured that God's hand is ever active behind the scenes, meticulously guiding each aspect towards the ultimate good. During moments of anticipation, patience becomes our ally and hope our unwavering companion. For within the unseen workings of God, blessings are intricately woven into the fabric of our lives, poised to unfurl at the appointed time. Amidst life's trials, take solace in the unwavering strength and courage bestowed upon us by God, empowering us to confront each hurdle with grace. Therefore, stand resolute in your faith, assured that God's blessings are forthcoming, meticulously crafted for your benefit. Yield to His divine plan, recognizing that He alone holds the master key to our faith. Trust, wait patiently, and hold fast to your belief, for His assurances are unshakable and His love enduring. Rely on His guidance and maintain unwavering faith that all things will unfold according to His divine will. As you progress forward, remain attentive to the invaluable lessons embedded within this experience. Life often presents challenges as opportunities for personal and spiritual development, nurturing our growth and fortitude. Embrace these teachings wholeheartedly, utilizing them as stepping stones toward greater enlightenment. Rest assured that God will guide you towards a resolution that instills peace and harmony. He diligently orchestrates the balance of every aspect of your existence, ensuring that all falls into place for your utmost benefit. Today, I, your father, shall recount a tale witnessed concerning a distinguished attorney endeavoring to decipher your duplicate signature. Yet fear not, for the traps laid by the adversary shall be uncovered as I unveil the snares before you. Though solemn, this period also signals a time of great joy and deepened insight, declares the Father. In the bustling city of Jerusalem, there lived a renowned attorney named Samuel. Samuel was known far and wide for his legal prowess and sharp intellect. His reputation preceded him, and many sought his counsel in matters of the law. One day, a curious case came across Samuel's desk. It involved the mysterious deciphering of a duplicate signature, an enigma that had confounded even the most astute legal minds in the land. Intrigued by the challenge, Samuel took it upon himself to unravel the mystery. As Samuel delved deeper into the case, he encountered various obstacles and setbacks. Each attempt to decipher the duplicate signature seemed to lead to a dead end, leaving Samuel feeling frustrated and perplexed. However, he refused to give up, determined to uncover the truth hidden within the cryptic signature. In his quest for answers, Samuel sought guidance from the scriptures, drawing inspiration from the wisdom contained within its pages. Through prayer and reflection, he discovered that the key to unlocking the mystery lay not in his own intellect, but in his faith in a higher power. With renewed determination and a steadfast belief in God's guidance, Samuel continued his investigation. And lo and behold, through a series of unexpected revelations and divine interventions, the truth behind the duplicate signature was finally revealed. In the end, Samuel emerged triumphant, not only in solving the case, but also in reaffirming his faith in God's providence. The tale of the attorney and the duplicate signature served as a reminder that with God's help, even the most daunting challenges can be overcome. The moral of the story is that faith and perseverance go hand in hand. When faced with seemingly insurmountable obstacles, 
It is our unwavering trust in God's plan that carries us through. As the scriptures teach us, with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19 verse 26. Focus not on potential mishaps, for I am the God who consistently leads you to triumph, guiding you from faith to faith and victory to victory. Can you accept yes as your answer? All of my promises are affirmative and reliable. So fix your gaze on me, knowing that I am clearing the path ahead. Even though you may lack all the answers, your answer is not a thing or a plan, but a person, my son, who ratified your deliverance by going to the cross, rescuing you from the depths of suffering and leading you into a realm of blessing and progress. Even if you err, I am the God who can turn your mistakes into successes. Though you may not see what lies ahead, cling to my steady hand, guiding you through every twist and turn. Challenges will undoubtedly arise, but I am the God who can transform the rugged, arduous path into one that is light and easy, much to the dismay of those who anticipate only hardship for you. Pay them no mind. Instead, show them love and proceed confidently into the destiny and purpose I have ordained for you in my kingdom. Amidst the currents of negativity that threaten to pull you under, I urge you to lift your head high. Expect an abundant outpouring of my grace, enveloping you in hope and dispelling darkness. My spirit rains down blessings, nurturing your dreams and bringing your heart's desires to fruition in extraordinary ways. While it's important to be mindful of potential challenges, do not let anxieties consume you. Trust that I will provide you with the wisdom and strength needed to overcome any obstacles you may encounter. Every morning, affirm in your heart, what else could go right? Approach each day with an open mind, anticipating unexpected blessings waiting to unfold. Reconciliation, long for? Yes, and much more. Opportunities born from setbacks? They are already manifesting, declares God. Remain open to the possibilities, embracing the good that may emerge in ways beyond your imagination. Life's rhythm includes both sunshine and rain, joy and sorrow. Yet amidst it all, I remain constant. My unwavering love for you serves as your comfort and strength. Let it bolster your determination as you courageously face the future with confidence, knowing that I am always by your side. God proclaims that while this season carries weighty matters, it also brings forth abundant joy and profound insights. He is unveiling to you the strategies to navigate through the traps set by the enemy. Despite the adversary's attempts to divert you from your path, God will propel you far beyond his reach, rendering his schemes ineffective. As you discern the pitfalls revealed by God, it's crucial to observe openly and transparently the situations around you. Even the most potent discernment bestowed upon you becomes futile if your eyes remain tightly shut. Command your senses to perceive. By aligning your decisions with God's will, you will overcome the schemes of the enemy and step into a realm of triumph. Today, know that you are not alone in life's journey. God is within you, beside you, above you, and below you, paving your path and shielding you from the enemy's traps. Reject any notion that places the burden solely on your efforts, for life is just because God is your life. His response to you is one of compassion, grace, and a light burden. Recognize that the strength within you is greater than any obstacle, for it is instilled by God himself for such moments. You possess the strength to overcome any force that seeks to oppress you, akin to how Samson broke free from his bonds. I am your source of strength, and you are far from feeble. Within you, I am rising, transforming you into a towering beacon of spiritual power and liberation. The divine empowerment bestowed upon you extends beyond your personal needs to benefit your surroundings, your neighborhood, town, and community. You wield authority and power that intimidates the illegitimate dominion of darkness. Despite the enemy's attempts to challenge your identity, choose to believe in my words over his. Reject the false authority of the visible realm, 
for I am your constant defender, always by your side. I have entrusted you to be active until my return. You are a formidable force, empowered by my presence within you, bringing heaven to earth. Approach every challenge with unwavering confidence, knowing that victory is your rightful inheritance as a cherished child of the Most High. Genuine happiness lies in embracing the daily provisions I provide and placing your trust in me, your Divine Shepherd. I assure you that I will not only meet your physical needs but also fulfill the deeper desires of your soul, safeguard your family's well-being, and grant you the wisdom necessary for spiritual growth. These aspects of your life hold great importance to me, as it is through this wisdom that you thrive under my guidance, faithfully living out the principles of my word with joy and commitment. Know that days filled with blessings are not just on the horizon. They are already here. Embrace this truth wholeheartedly, for my omnipotent word always comes to fruition. Bring all your burdens to me, and do not let the weight of your worries overwhelm you alone. The time for your peace and renewal has arrived. God will uproot every evil thing in your life. Imagine yourself standing at the edge of a beautiful, lush forest, the fresh scent of pine in the air, the soft rustle of leaves underfoot. From afar, it looks perfect, serene, full of life. Yet, as you step closer and look more carefully, you notice something. The forest is filled with weeds and thorns, choking the life out of the beautiful flowers and plants, distorting the view and the full potential of its beauty. Our lives can sometimes look like this forest. On the surface, it may seem perfect and full of life. Yet upon closer examination, we find weeds, those evil things are forces entangling and choking our spiritual growth, inhibiting us from realizing our full potential in Christ. Today, I will help you to identify, confront, and uproot these forces so that you can flourish as God intended. The starting point of this journey is to recognize the existence of these forces. Just as one needs to recognize a weed before it can be uprooted from a beautiful garden, Recognizing the existence of evil forces is the essential first step in our spiritual journey to freedom. These forces can come in various shapes and sizes, sometimes lurking in the shadows of our lives, almost invisible. Other times, these forces may be standing boldly in our paths, blatantly opposing us. Let's look at a story in 2 Kings 5. Gehazi was the servant of the prophet Elisha and had witnessed incredible miracles. Yet, when faced with the prospect of wealth and material possessions, Gehazi allowed greed, an evil force, to enter his heart. He lied to Naaman and Elisha to gain silver and garments he had not earned. His inability to recognize and resist this destructive force led to a grave consequence. He was struck with leprosy. This story is a vivid reminder that these evil forces can sometimes be found within us hidden in our hearts, subtly influencing our own thoughts, actions, and choices. They can be attitudes or behaviors contrary to the fruits of the Spirit, such as greed, pride, anger, envy, bitterness, or unforgiveness. Recognizing these forces requires sincere self-examination. We need to hold a mirror to our hearts and ask ourselves, what attitudes and behaviors are hindering my walk with God? or what aspects of my character do not reflect Christ's nature? The answers to these questions are clues to evil forces at work in our lives. It's not only the forces within that we need to recognize. The Bible reminds us in 1 Peter 5 verse 8 that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. These external evil forces can present themselves as harmful relationships, negative environments, or societal pressures that pull us away from our commitment to God. The story of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel in 1 Kings 21 illustrates how external evil forces can affect our lives. Ahab allowed Jezebel, his wife, to lead him astray from God's commands, even to the point of murdering an innocent man, Naboth, just to acquire his vineyard. He failed to recognize the negative influence Jezebel had over him, and this led to their downfall. But fear not, for God's word serves as a powerful spotlight, shedding light on the hidden corners of our lives where these forces may lurk. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The word helps us discern right from wrong, good from evil, allowing us to identify these evil forces. 
So, recognizing the evil forces both within and around us is a crucial part of uprooting every evil thing affecting our lives. It requires honesty, humility, and a deep reliance on God's word. But with God's help, we can not only recognize these forces but also overcome them. As 1 John 4 verse 4 reassures us, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Now, where do these weeds or these evil forces come from? Every action has a cause. Every effect has a source. The evil forces at work in our lives causing strife, confusion, and discord also have a source, an origin from which they come. We're reminded of this in the book of Job, chapter 1. Job, a man described as upright and blameless, suddenly found his life in turmoil. He lost his wealth, his children, and his health in quick succession. While it may appear on the surface that these calamities were mere accidents or unfortunate coincidences, we know from the narrative that the source of Job's trials was none other than Satan himself. Satan, the enemy of our souls, is often the source of the evil forces we face. This isn't meant to scare us, but to bring awareness. Ephesians 6 verse 12 tells us that our struggle isn't against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil. Just as a weed's roots lie beneath the soil, hidden from view but firmly anchored, these forces often operate behind the scenes, causing havoc in our lives. However, there's an important distinction to remember. While Satan may be the source of these evil forces, we also have a role to play. Let's reflect on the story of King Saul as an example. In 1 Samuel 15, Saul was commanded by God to destroy the Amalekites completely. However, he disobeyed sparing the king and keeping some of the spoils of war. This act of disobedience opened a door for an evil force to operate in Saul's life. 1 Samuel 16 verse 14 tells us that an evil spirit from God tormented Saul. It wasn't that God created this evil spirit, but rather that Saul's disobedience removed God's protective hand, allowing the evil force to torment him. This highlights a key truth about the source of evil forces. While they may originate from the enemy, our actions and choices can invite or resist these forces. Disobedience, compromise, and unrighteousness can create an environment where these forces can thrive. Understanding the source of evil forces helps us to fight them effectively. It reveals the need for obedience to God's commands, a constant reliance on His grace, and a resolute stand against the wiles of the enemy. And the most encouraging part is we are not left defenseless against these forces. James 4 verse 7 promises, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Despite the power of the source of these evil forces, the one who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Therefore, as we recognize the source of these evil forces, let's not despair or fear. Instead, let's submit to God, uphold his commands, and trust in his power to overcome and uproot these forces from our lives. As we move forward in this journey, we need to be armed and ready, just like a hiker equipping themselves before an expedition. We need to equip ourselves with the armor of God. The battle against evil forces isn't fought with physical weapons. No sword, shield, or arrow crafted by human hands can stand against the spiritual forces we contend with. However, we have been equipped with a divine armor, tailored by the creator of the universe himself. This is the armor of God. This idea isn't foreign to the scriptures. Take the story of King David as a young boy preparing to fight Goliath, the giant who had defied the armies of the living God. In 1 Samuel 17, King Saul tried to clothe David in his own armor, but David couldn't move comfortably in it. Instead, he chose to face the giant with just his sling and five smooth stones. Why? Because David knew his real protection came from God. His reliance on God's power was his true armor. The armor of God is beautifully described in Ephesians 6 verses 13 to 17. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Each piece of this divine armor serves a distinct purpose. The belt of truth combats the lies of the enemy, 
The breastplate of righteousness protects our hearts from accusations and guilt. The readiness of the gospel of peace stabilizes us amidst the chaos of battle. The shield of faith deflects the fiery darts of doubt, fear, and worry. The helmet of salvation guards our minds from thoughts that lead to sin and despair. The sword of the Spirit, God's Word, allows us to counterattack, cutting through deceptions and bringing to light the enemy's schemes. We might not be able to see this armor, but its power is real and tangible. In our journey to uproot every evil thing or force affecting our lives, the armor of God is essential. We must consciously choose to put it on each day, trusting in the protection and power it provides. And as we stand firm in this divine armor, we'll find ourselves more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, able to resist the schemes of the enemy and uproot every trace of evil in our lives. Next, we need to tap into the power of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting are two spiritual disciplines that have been observed throughout the ages, serving as powerful tools in our fight against evil forces. Though they are different, they often go hand in hand, each one enhancing the power of the other. In the book of Esther, we encounter a compelling example of the power of prayer and fasting. The Jews in Persia were facing a grave threat of annihilation due to the schemes of Haman, an evil force in their midst. Upon learning of this plot, Queen Esther called for all the Jews to fast and pray for three days, while she did the same before approaching the king. This was a dangerous move, but the risk was necessary to save her people. Esther 4 verse 16 records her resolution, Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. After this period of fasting and prayer, Esther found favor in the sight of the king, and the Jews were saved from destruction. This story reveals the power of prayer and fasting in uprooting the evil forces at work in our lives. It can bring about divine intervention, shifts in situations, and break strongholds that human effort alone cannot. Prayer is our communication with God. It's our way of bringing our needs, concerns, fears, and hopes to Him. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 encourages us to pray without ceasing, emphasizing the importance of constant communication with God. Fasting, on the other hand, is a voluntary act of refraining from food or other activities as a physical expression of our spiritual hunger and desperation. It shows God that we are willing to sacrifice our physical needs and wants for spiritual growth and breakthrough. Daniel, another biblical figure, understood the power of prayer and fasting. In Daniel 9, he fasted, prayed, and confessed sins on behalf of his people, seeking God's mercy and intervention. God responded by sending the angel Gabriel with a message of hope and promise for the future. The Apostle James, in James 5 verse 16, tells us that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. When paired with fasting, this power is amplified. Fasting helps us to humble ourselves, focus on God, and heighten our spiritual awareness, making our prayers even more effective. As we face evil forces in our lives, let's remember the power that lies in prayer and fasting. They're not just religious rituals, they're spiritual weapons that can help us uproot the evil affecting us. As we devote ourselves to prayer and fasting, we can expect God to move powerfully on our behalf, bringing deliverance, breaking chains, and leading us into the abundant life that He has promised us. Next, we need the Word of God on our journey. In our quest to uproot every evil force that affects our lives, we must not overlook the most potent weapon we possess, the Word of God. It's more than just a collection of historical narratives, poetic expressions, or moral guidelines. The Word of God is living, active, and powerful. Consider the account in Joshua 1. As Joshua took over leadership after Moses' death, he faced the daunting task of leading the Israelites into the Promised Land, a land occupied by formidable foes. But God, in His infinite wisdom, did not hand Joshua a physical weapon. Instead, He handed him the Book of the Law, His Word. God told Joshua in Joshua 1 verse 8 to keep this Book of the Law always on his lips, to meditate on it day and night so that he may be careful to do everything written in it. Then he would be prosperous and successful. This wasn't an ordinary book. It was a powerful weapon for success and victory. The Word of God, as our weapon, serves two primary functions, 
defense, and offense. Defensively, it guards our hearts and minds, acting as a shield against the lies and deceptions of the enemy. When evil forces whisper words of doubt, fear, guilt, or inadequacy, we can counteract those whispers with the promises and truths found in God's Word. Offensively, the Word of God serves as a sword. Ephesians 6 verse 17 depicts the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit, our primary offensive weapon in spiritual battles. It's the tool we use to counterattack, to take ground, and to advance against the forces of evil. A lesser-known story in the Bible that highlights the power of God's Word is found in 2 Kings 22. King Josiah, after coming across the Book of the Law, initiated a nationwide reform based on God's Word. He removed idols, eliminated false priests, and restored true worship, effectively uprooting the evils that had infiltrated the land. The key to this transformation was the Word of God. In the face of evil forces, the Word of God is our sure defense and our potent offense. It equips us to recognize lies, stand firm in truth, and boldly advance against any force that stands against us. It's our guidebook for living, our comfort in distress, our hope in despair, and our weapon in battle. To effectively wield this weapon, we must be immersed in it, reading it, meditating on it, memorizing it, and applying it in our lives. As we become more grounded in the language of God, we become better at recognizing the enemy's schemes and more effective in fighting them. The Word of God is the living, breathing voice of God, a voice that breaks chains, pulls down strongholds, and uproots every evil force. As Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Armed with this weapon, we can confidently confront and conquer every evil force affecting our lives. In order to ensure that we are not allowing any weed to grow back, we need to live a life of righteousness. Any sin in our life can act as a seed from which these evil forces can grow back. Righteous living ensures that no such seed finds space in our life thereby protecting us from these forces. Living righteously is, therefore, a crucial element in uprooting every evil thing or force affecting our lives. It's about aligning our thoughts, words, and actions with God's standards of holiness and ideousness. But how can we, as imperfect human beings, live righteously? The Bible provides the answer in numerous examples for us. One such example can be found in the life of Daniel. Living as a captive in Babylon, Daniel found himself in a culture that was contrary to his faith. The Babylonians worshipped different gods, ate food that was considered unclean by Jewish standards, and followed practices that were in direct conflict with God's commands. Yet Daniel stood firm in his faith to live righteously. In Daniel 1 verse 8, it says, But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Despite the pressures and potential consequences, Daniel chose to honor God above pleasing men. As a result, Daniel experienced God's favor and protection. When he was thrown into the lion's den for praying to God despite the king's decree, God shut the mouths of the lions and preserved his life. Daniel's commitment to live righteously amidst adversity led to the manifestation of God's power and glory. Living righteously isn't always easy, but it is always rewarding. It provides a clear conscience, inner peace, divine protection, and favor. The Bible encourages us in Galatians 6 verse 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Righteous living involves a commitment to honesty, integrity, kindness, and love. But it goes beyond just behaving ethically. It is about surrendering our lives to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us and transform us from within. Titus 2 verses 12 to 13 instructs us. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we live righteously, we create an atmosphere that is hostile to evil forces. Ephesians 4 verse 27 tells us that sin gives the enemy a foothold in our lives, but righteousness slams the door shut, denying him any opportunity. The door in his face, 
It uproots the hidden things that could potentially harm us and positions us to experience the fullness of God's blessings. So let's be inspired by the likes of Daniel, who despite being in an environment that promoted ungodliness, chose to live a life of righteousness. It's a personal decision we all have to make, but it's a decision that carries profound implications. Living righteously not only uproots the evil in our lives, but also establishes a foundation for abundant and eternal life. Now, much like a seasoned explorer who consistently checks their route to ensure they're not lost, another thing we need to do is to constantly examine our spiritual lives. Just as we regularly check our physical health, it's equally crucial to consistently check our spiritual health. This checkup involves examining our lives to identify and address any spiritual deficiencies or ailments that may be affecting our relationship with God. The Bible emphasizes the importance of this self-examination. In 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5, Paul instructs us to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith. He says, test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. This process involves examining our thoughts, words, actions, and motives against the standard of God's word. One individual who serves as an example of this is King David. Despite being a man after God's own heart, David was not without fault. He committed grave sins, including adultery and murder. However, when the prophet Nathan confronted him about his sins in 2 Samuel 12, David didn't react defensively. He acknowledged his wrongdoing, repented sincerely, and sought God's forgiveness. David's prayer of repentance in Psalm 51 displays a heart that understands the need for a spiritual checkup. In verse 10, David prays, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. This prayer not only reflects David's remorse over his past actions, but also his desire for inward renewal and righteousness. But a spiritual checkup is not only for times when we blatantly sinned. It's a practice we should engage in regularly. We need to constantly evaluate if we're growing in our faith, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, walking in obedience to God's commands, and living a life of love and service to others. It involves asking tough questions and being ready to make necessary changes. The story of the church in Ephesus in Revelation 2 verses 1 to 7 offers insight into this. Jesus commended them for their perseverance, hard work, and refusal to tolerate wickedness. However, he also pointed out that they had forsaken their first love. They had lost the passion they initially had for Christ and his works. They were diligent in their works, but their hearts were not right. The Ephesians were called to remember their former state, repent, and do the things they did at first. This call to self-examination was an invitation to perform a spiritual checkup recognize where they had gone wrong, and return to their original passion and love for Christ. A consistent spiritual checkup helps us identify the weeds we need to uproot and the seeds we need to sow. It keeps our spiritual life healthy and our walk with God on track. It's an opportunity to receive God's grace for our shortcomings and His wisdom for our growth. Remember, this checkup is not to bring condemnation, but to bring conviction that leads to change. Romans 8 verse 1 assures us, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us embrace this practice with open hearts and the assurance of God's love and grace. Regular self-examination and repentance ensure that we are aligned with God's will and no evil force is finding its way back into our lives. Now, even with all this preparation, there will be moments when we directly encounter these forces. In such moments, we are called to resist. James 4 verse 7 offers us a potent strategy to confront these forces. Submit yourselves, then, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resisting the devil is an active stance. It involves standing firm against his schemes and rejecting his lies. To resist, we must be aware of his strategies and counter them with God's truth. In the Old Testament, the prophet Nehemiah provides us with an example of resisting opposition. When tasked with rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, he faced opposition from Sambalat and Tobiah, who attempted to discourage the Israelites and halt their work. They ridiculed, plotted, and threatened, trying to instill fear and doubt in Nehemiah and his workers. But how did Nehemiah resist? Nehemiah 4 verse 14 records his response, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, 
who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Nehemiah countered their lies with the truth of God's greatness. He kept his focus on God's mission and encouraged the people to do the same. Nehemiah also resisted by strengthening the defenses as seen in Nehemiah 4 verses 16 to 18 and by praying to God for protection. He did not ignore the threats, but neither did he let them deter him from his mission. Resisting the devil involves a similar strategy. We need to recognize his lies, counter them with God's truth, strengthen our spiritual defenses, and persist in prayer. We must remain steadfast in our faith, rooted in God's word, and committed to our mission. In Matthew 4 verses 1 to 11, another illustration can be found in the life of Jesus himself. In the wilderness, Jesus was tempted by the devil, but each time the devil proposed a temptation, Jesus countered it with scripture. He resisted the devil by speaking the truth of God's word, demonstrating the power of the word as a weapon against evil forces. This approach still applies to us today. When the enemy attempts to sow seeds of fear, doubt, insecurity, or temptation in our lives, we resist by countering those lies with God's truths. We remind ourselves of who God is and who we are in Him. We declare His promises and stand firm in His truth. To resist the devil is to stand firm against his schemes, armed with the truth of God's word, covered in prayer, and steadfast in faith. It is to submit to God, align our lives with His will, and stay committed to His purposes. As we do this, we can trust in the promise that the devil will flee from us. Our God is greater, our cause is righteous, and our victory is assured. Next, let's not forget that this uprooting journey is not one we need to undertake alone. We need Christian fellowship. This is not just about a social gathering. Christian fellowship is a vital part of our spiritual life, a platform for mutual encouragement, prayer, learning, and growth in faith. Through fellowship, we draw strength from one another and collectively resist the forces that seek to pull us away from God. When we fellowship with other believers, we create an environment that fosters spiritual growth and resilience. We can share our struggles, learn from each other's experiences, pray for each other, and support each other in our journey. This unity can be a source of strength, especially when we face trials or temptations. Paul's letter to the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 echoes this. Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So, through fellowship, we can uplift each other and stand together in faith. In the story of Moses, Aaron, and her during the battle against the Amalekites in Exodus 17 verses 8 to 16, we see a demonstration of the power of fellowship. As long as Moses held up his hands, Israel prevailed. But when he let his hands down, Amalek prevailed. When Moses grew tired, Aaron and her held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other so that his hands remained steady till sunset, and Joshua overcame the Amalekite army. This story illustrates how fellowship can help us in our spiritual battles. Like Aaron and her, we can support each other, pray for each other, and help keep each other focused on God. We are reminded in Ecclesiastes 4 verse 12, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Our shared faith, collective prayer, and mutual encouragement make us stronger and harder to defeat. So remember, we're not just aimlessly wandering in the forest. We're on a mission to clear it of the weeds, the evil forces. We are equipped, we are prepared, and we are not alone. In Christ, we have the victory, and through him, we can uproot every evil thing or force affecting our lives. Also, we have reason to be hopeful and courageous in the face of these destructive forces. We have a potent defense, the power of the cross. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has triumphed over all powers of darkness. This victory is not just for him, but is also for us. We share in this victory as believers. Our position in Christ gives us authority over these forces. For it is written in Luke 10 verse 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Now, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Dear Heavenly Father, today, I come before you in the quietness of my soul, acknowledging your sovereignty and grace. 
Lord, I ask for your forgiveness, even as I forgive those who come against me. In the name of Jesus, I stand against every evil force that seeks to attack my life. I declare that they have no power over me or my loved ones because we belong to God. Lord, I command every seed of discord, every root of bitterness, every trace of deceit to be uprooted from my life right now. I declare that my heart, mind, and soul are under your rule and authority, and I am not subject to any evil power. I turn my eyes to you, Father, acknowledging that you are the source of my strength and my deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I reject the lies of the enemy, the whispers of failure, fear, and doubt. I stand firm on the truth that I am loved, redeemed, and empowered by you. O oh Lord, you have given me the power of your cross and the symbol of your victory over sin and death. I embrace this power and declare in the name of Jesus that every chain holding me back is shattered, every bondage of the enemy is broken, and I am free. Father, thank you for your armor that you have provided for me. I put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. Clothed in your armor, O Lord, I am prepared to stand firm and resist the enemy's attacks. Lord, I am confident not in my strength but in yours. I draw my courage from you, knowing that you have overcome the world. Father, I rely on the power of prayer and fasting, not as a ritual but as a genuine expression of my dependence on you. Your word is my defense, O Lord. I stand on your promises, holding onto them in the face of all adversities. Father, I seek to live righteously. I know that I am not perfect, but you are perfect, O Lord. I seek to align my thoughts, words, and actions with your will. Strengthen me, Lord, so that I may live in a manner that is pleasing to you. Father, I put my trust in your grace and mercy. I lean on your understanding and not my own. Thank you for your promise of victory. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.